you say you used to be one type, and now you're a different type. I know it can feel like that sometimes, but that's not really what happened. Let me explain. What's up team, it's Sherman here from Geek Psychology. I know it feels like I'm like making an excuse. Like, no, that's not what happened, that's not what happened. Please, listen to me. <laughs> uh, and that's kind of how it feels. I don't know why, but it does. Anyway, I understand that like, it feels like you change type. Um, and I know that you want to know your type. Finally, you just want to have that like peace of mind. Like, yes, I finally understand who I am. I, I understand what is going on in me. I can use my capabilities to the fullest. I, I found my purpose. I feel whole. Um, and, and sometimes it's just, it's easier for some people to find their type than it is for others. And I want to explain some of the reasons for that and give some stories about it and some of my own personal experiences too. And at the end, we can go into a couple questions and hopefully you can post uh, what you went through if you found your type, if you were had if you had type confusion for a while, okay? And other people will be able to read that and get some support through that. So you feel like, for example, um, when you were younger, you were way more extroverted, uh, maybe like an ENFP. And then now you feel like INFJ or INFP or something works better for you. Just it feels right. And so, well, you must have changed right? that's that's kind of the the thought process behind it like i felt like this and now i'm you know these are resonating more with me these different characteristics so that's that's got to be what happened some of the issues that can can bring that about are for example when you are younger you naturally are just more extroverted not for everybody but myself like when i was in um, elementary school and middle school up until a certain critical incident, <laughs> I felt very extroverted. I would talk to anybody. I w had a lot of friends. Everybody would be like, oh, hey, hey, Sherman, how you doing? And, you know, wave into me in the hall and stuff like that. Um, I had a lot of girlfriends when I was in elementary school and stuff, which I guess that doesn't really count. I'm not trying to toot my own horn here. I'm just saying I was outgoing, right? I, I talked to people. I didn't really care. I was just playing with with the world and ideas. I was learning about the world. And you know, when you're younger, you kind of have to do that. You have to get a lot of new experiences and feedback because I mean, whether you think that the inner world is the real world or the outer world is the real world, you do need to get experiences from the outer world in order to survive <laughs> and in order to have some sort of understanding of life. So I'm not saying that's necessarily what happened to you, but that's one way of, of thinking about it. Another one is that your circumstances called on different experiences, called on different cognitive functions, different parts within you to be utilized more. Uh, whether they were, you know, repressing some other ones, like your maybe your dominant function, who you really, like this, this heroic side of yourself, who you feel most connected to and attached to within yourself, maybe that just wasn't honored. Maybe it was actually intentionally pushed down. Like you can't live life, you know, going by how you feel. It's not going to happen. You need to look at the, the data points and the measurements and you need to actually go through systematically to do it. Stop being a dreamer. You might have heard that before if you're an intuitive or if you're an FP. Maybe you were raised by a feeler family and you're a thinker well you're going to understand feeling a little bit more because probably the thinking aspects of yourself was were just suppressed you know we don't need that here get that out of here feel with us come around the bonfire and let's feel together and sing kumbaya even through school through work careers maybe where you lived the culture that you lived in sometimes just different cognitive functions get more attention. If you're living in the U.S., like STJs, S-I and T-E, introverted sensing, the one that's going into your past and, and checking it and recalling it to try to implement a solid structure to follow, to understand how the world worked before, how it's working now. And extroverted thinking, the one that's creating decisive, effective, measurable 
plans and, and achievements, you know, focusing on that, those are really prized within United States culture in a lot of ways. So maybe you just kind of connect to that. Maybe if, if you're a, a male, then you naturally connect with that thinker idea because men are supposed to be thinkers. Or if you're a woman, you know, you're, if you're a woman, if you're a woman, maybe you really connected with FE, that extroverted feeling kind of unifying healer voice within you. That's like, we need to make sure that everybody is, you know, within the group, I'm, I'm taking care of their needs. I'm meeting um, their, their problems proactively to try to help them. It could just not be your natural innate style though. So I know it's hard. There are tons of different variables and that's where a lot of confusion comes from. Even if it's within your cognitive function stack, if I'm, if I'm talking uh, to a level that you don't know yet, I'm sorry. Even if it's not within your cognitive function stack, you can still have a, an affinity to some cognitive functions. Like I, I feel like I learned, I was given gifted introverted intuition at some point from a friend. I, I specifically remember that friend. I remember what we were talking about when I got the insights that I needed. Um, and I've stuck with those for a long time. Doesn't necessarily mean that that's my preferred function, that that's the way I'm wired necessarily. And also your dominant function, your hero within your life, your main focus, cognitive function, the one that fuels you, energizes you, puts you in flow, plus your auxiliary function, that upgrade, that growth, support, mentor kind of character, um, those together can actually feel like a different function. Introverted feeling, the one that's checking in with my conscience all the time and, and reflecting over my values and trying to balance likes and dislikes and stuff like that. Um, that plus extroverted intuition, the one that's exploring and pushing buttons and trying to shake things up to understand the patterns that emerge, those two together can kind of feel like introverted intuition. That serene mystic that's, that's seen into how other people's minds form patterns and understand the, the subconscious. Because I'm making decisions by tapping into my understanding of who I am and my values and my beliefs on a deep level, and then using that to transplant, I suppose, onto other people and imagining what would things be like in their situation. So you can see how those kind of feel like introverted intuition. So that could be one other issue that uh, has, has made things a little bit more difficult for you. So I want to give you a little, I guess, story analogy to go through it so that you can maybe see it in a different way. And that is like, if you were to change type, it would be like switching out the characters within the story, your plot, your, your storyline of life and, and not having any qualms about it. <laughs> like, like if you were watching the Simpsons or something like that, and all of a sudden, uh, Homer just, he's not there. He's been moved to another house and you don't feel that he should be there. You, I mean, there's a new character and you just kind of forget about Homer. Sometimes he's in the background, he's doing stuff and you just, you have like no connection to it or the connection is like a negative, like a rival connection or something like that. You feel like, why is he still in this show? He shouldn't be in this show. And it's, it's really strange. I know it's a strange metaphor, strange analogy, but like, that's kind of what it would be like if you were an ENFP and now you say you were an INFJ, that means that what gave you the most energy and fueled you and, and gave you a sense of purpose in a lot of ways in your life, extroverted intuition, innovative explorer, like checking out different ideas, playing with those ideas and seeing what will emerge from there very optimistic, fun kind of bubbly energy, in my opinion, if that were just gone and actually treated with hostility. And now the, the ruler, the leader is more of this clairvoyant kind of mystic, 
type energy, this looking at things from a long time perspective and getting into this Zen-like unfocused state where an insight is going to pop in and, and tell you how things are going to shift throughout life um, and maybe seeing things with symbols a lot more and reading people's minds based on your own understanding of how your mind form patterns and how your mind works. You can't really have both of those as your preferred method, your preferred approach to life. You can't just switch those characters out within your psyche and then everything just kind of works as it does. It's just not going to happen like that. So instead I offer you this other approach to viewing it. Think of it like you're still in a movie, you're still watching this, this story, this plot line, you have all these, you have these eight characters, okay, that are sitting into different roles within your psyche, different energies and emotions attached to them. But sometimes the spotlight is on one character. And as far as it's doing that, the story is progressing, that character's plot line is progressing, and you get involved in that. You get excited by that. You get attached to it. That doesn't mean that it's the main character. Like, what about this other plot line going on? Well, sometimes you need to shift your perspective. Sometimes life makes you shift your perspective. Things happen and you start to have to call on different tool sets that the different cognitive functions bring out the different parts within you are bringing out. And so when you're doing that, when that's being called on, well, you're focused on that. And if you're in a situation that calls on that for a very long time, you're probably going to start to identify with that a lot more and forget some of what's going on with the other guys. Doesn't mean that they're not there. It doesn't mean that they should be forgotten. You know, maybe that one is still the, the leader, the one that actually is supposed to drive your life story forward. But things are happening that just call you to look over here for too long. So I hope that that analogy kind of made you think about some things, some experiences in your life. Um, I, I know I, I've had plenty where it's just like, I need to focus on this thing. And maybe it wasn't a conscious decision, but things happen. I needed, when I moved to Japan, I needed to use extroverted intuition a lot more because I needed to piece together. I needed to connect the patterns of life and understand what is going on in this <laughs> alien country. As I grow up, I need to focus more on introverted sensing, looking into my past, recalling it, reviewing it, understanding the method for implementing things in my life, as well as that strategic commander that I fought for so long that I've hated for so long. But you can't hate the parts within you. You need to know when to use them, when to listen to their advice, like they're a bunch of advisors within your, your board your war war room board or something like that or they're the different characters within your life that you just it's time to give this one some spotlight so what i want to say here is that we fluctuate our focus goes from different aspects of ourselves, different parts of ourself but your psyche is made up of certain characters being favored and valued okay and when you feel like you have changed your personality type, it just means that you're, you're relying more on certain characters within you. Certain cognitive functions are just speaking louder more often or are the ones with the tools and you just need to rely on them for a little bit more. So my best advice here is to just keep studying, keep journaling. If you don't journal, you should probably journal because it's very good, it helps you keep track of those patterns of how things are changing. And, you know, keep studying, dig into the cognitive functions on a deeper level, really try to get an understanding of them. Talk to other people, understand what helped them and what confused them. Maybe they had some traumas or something like that that you just, you really relate to and then, boom, you just understand things a bit better. I hope this video helped. I know I haven't given you a clear answer 
to your personality type. But that's not really my goal here. My goal here is to get you thinking about it in different ways so that you can piece it together and you can understand it for yourself. Because really, like, that's the journey is so important. Like, I, I could give you the map. I could explain all the cognitive functions which I have and which other channels and books do. Um, but sometimes that just, it doesn't click necessarily. And you just, you need to see it in a different way. And through doing that, you gain more insight, more understanding of yourself. Okay, I hope it helped. Keep up the life fun questing. Good luck, have fun. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, do all that good stuff. And peace.